are you all able to hear me well? Do a thumbs up if you can hear me. First of all, thank you to Alan for being here. Go ahead and wave, Alan. He's going from one busy church to another and trying to be in two places almost at once. So that's a bit of a challenge, but here he is. We also want to thank Chris and Jeanette for their help in the background with facilitating this worship. Billy, who had been on vacation until last week, um, has been working with the choir, so we'll be hearing another production from the choir. I don't know exactly when the timing is for the next one, but they are working hard on a couple things, and they're planning a Christmas concert for us, just so everybody knows. So they have lots of things in store for us. And I hear from Judy Botsford that Helen came in and recorded with Judy a couple of things as well, so that's also lovely. We're happy to have different musicians coming and using our instruments. Uh, the current session of Racial Justice Conversations has concluded. We will begin it again in September, so if anyone is interested in part participating, I encourage you to email the church at jcchurch at jacksoncommunitychurch.org. That's a mouthful to say. And just finally, a quick reminder on upcoming programming. As usual, every Friday, we do have our cocktails and Christian conversations at 5 o'clock by Zoom. You all will receive that link or have already received it if you wish to participate. You don't have to read or study ahead. Just show up and we'll have a conversation. And for our youth and our young people, we have two things going on. We have a leaders and training program going on at 1 o'clock on Mondays right now. They're working on a letterboxing project to share with other families in the community. And we also have the youth choir and band, which meets every Monday at 4 and 4.30, working with Billy. And they're preparing their first song. So with that, I would invite us to center ourselves by listening to Heather Pearson's One Breath at a Time. I'm learning how to love, I'm learning how to give, I'm learning how to trust, I'm learning how to live, one breath at a time. I'm learning how to love, I'm learning how to give, I'm learning how to trust, I'm learning Oh, uh -huh. 
So now we come to the prayers of the people. And I'm going to invite you to unmute if you wish to share a prayer, but why don't we all unmute and I'll say one big hello to each other. Say it out loud so everybody can hear you, including Alan and I. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Hi, Jan. <laughs> oh, there they are. Hi, Steve. Hi, Colleen. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Sue. It's good to see your smiling face. Your smiling face. Same with same same to everybody, and you too, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we're gonna right. suggest um, meeting, unless you're going to share a prayer concern. And I'm going to uh, um, start with two prayers that, well, there are several prayers actually at this point that have been brought forward. Uh, we've already had two worship services this morning. We've had an eight o'clock and a 9.15, so it's a busy morning for us, even busier than normal. So I'm going to add for prayers of concern and then I'm going to invite you to share more uh, we remember Lloyd Bridges. He was a member of the Way Station community and he died in the care, you know, the loving care and the hospice attention of Mineral Springs last week. So we remember Lloyd. We remember his life and we lift him up. We think also of those that were raised up at the eight o'clock and the 9.15, Eric, who is an ER doctor. We think of Jim and his partially torn retina. We think of Dean who needs special surgery. Max, who's been in the emergency department, whose father has been in the emergency department so recently. We think of Nancy who had a mini stroke. We think of George and Lois, who while they were planning to lay their brother to rest, also experienced the death of Sister Elaine, who had come out to help them with that service. We think of the Richardson family, whose home has been damaged by fire in this past week here in the Valley. We name those who are living with cancer, we include those who are undergoing active treatment, including Claire and Cheryl, and several other family members or community members who cannot be named at this time. I raise up my niece, Alexis, who has an active case of COVID. Oh, she's asymptomatic, but she has COVID and um, is undergoing multiple surgeries for hips. She's a just pray for her hips. We pray for Barry and for Jan. Jan, who is here with us with her strong, healthy heart. And Barry, who continues to live a life that has been changed and transformed with all that that may mean for both of them. We think of Richard and Paulette, who are both still recovering from strokes. We think of those who live with changes in mental health and cognition. We think of Ray and Arden's daughter and Ray and Arden themselves. We think of Deanna and Judy, those who have experienced many forms of surgery, Lee and Kate so many others. Please add any prayers of concern that you might bring forward at this time. Just unmute yourselves and go ahead and share. Go ahead, Sue. A prayer for my friend Roland as he recovers from surgery and is home now, but please do keep him in your prayers. Thank you. For Roland. Remember, go ahead and unmute yourselves and just speak so I don't have to hunt you down with your raised hand. Just go ahead if you have something to share. Uh, 
I move us then to prayers of celebration. Donna's son has an upcoming marriage. Tim and Michelle will be getting married next week. And so prayers for them. Prayers for the couple that I will be, whose, whose ceremony at, at which I will be officiating today. Sean and Lindsay, prayers of blessing on these new families that are being knitted together. Prayers of celebration for those that are celebrating a, a birthday or an anniversary. Raise your hands if you're an August baby with a birthday. Anybody confessing? Yes, Kate is, conf Kate is Kate's confessing. Kate is confessing. Okay, we have at least one one August birthday that's being confessed, and I know there are others. I saw Colleen. I saw I saw Colleen. Okay, I spy. I remember I have to flip through a screen to find all you guys. So if you it, raise your if you raise your hand, leave it raised for a little bit here. Did I miss anybody? No. All right. So. Why don't you unmute yourselves and we are going to sing happy birthday. We're not gonna sing happy birthday in the, the sanctuary. You guys have to do all the heavy lifting. So one, two, three. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. 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 All right, I'm gonna ask that you would join me in prayer, please. Oh, holy God. You are the God whose breath fills this world. You moved the waters. You created the darkness and the light. You created life itself. The first words that were uttered into this world were your words. And then you sent us your living world, word into this world that we might come to know your love in a personal, a tangible way. And you send us the enduring presence of the spirit that we might continue to feel and know your love tempered with mercy and justice, active in our own lives here, a healing, a creative force in this world. We have raised up so many names, both out of care and out of celebration. Be present to these, to these lives, these people, these communities. We add also those who have been taken by COVID or continue to live with COVID or who respond to COVID to those who are first responders in our own community and abroad. For our military, for the wisdom of our leaders, we ask you to always call out the best in those that have sought to become the ones that lead us and guide us. We ask for your presence, we ask for your blessing, and we offer you now our silence. And now I ask that you will all unmute yourselves that we may pray out loud together the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that we were first taught, and that we say now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. 
kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Thank you. We know that we're not completely in sync, but the beauty and the importance of hearing each other's voices cannot be overstated. Two of our services are now in person, and that's a big change, and it takes a lot of courage, and they're very small gatherings. They're not large gatherings. We continue to transform and to change and respond, but for many people, this gathering that we share at 1030 remains the most sustainable form. But we are grateful that Alan can be here to provide us with live music and that all of you will be here with us. We turn now to the scripture, which is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms per generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon at about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius! He stared at him in terror and he said, what is it, Lord? He answered, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon, who is called Peter. About noon the next day, as Cornelius's men were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again, a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what was to make, he was to make of the vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up. Go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. The next day, Peter got up and went with them and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. And as he talked with Cornelius, he went in and found that many had assembled, and he said to them, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. They answered Cornelius, oops, sorry, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, I was praying. Suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. Send for Simon, who is called Peter. That message spread. And as Peter preached, he began to speak to them, saying, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. 
You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The uncircumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone, without the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is I that I could hinder God? So ends the reading. I would ask that you now pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This morning we meditate on firsts, milestones and thresholds that have been crossed by different people at different times. And I imagine all of us have somewhere in our narrative, within our own biography, our own memoirs, or in those of our genetic or spiritual ancestors, the story of people who went first, who were the first who were to be called into new places, to new positions. We've heard many of these stories in the Bible itself. In particular, it was raised up today as we discussed this Stories such as Ruby Bridges, the first young girl to attend an integrated school against the protests of all in her community, her state, protected by federal authorities, at great cost to her family when her parents lost jobs, and to herself as she was threatened over and over again with death itself. And we think of the women the movement that brought the vote for all women in this nation. The firsts to cast their ballots and claim the right of the vote for their gender. As Ruby claimed the right for education on behalf of all the children of her generation. We all have firsts. Perhaps we were the first to graduate from high school or to go on to college, to leave a certain part of the nation and change the trajectory of our entire family's future by the choices that we made. Perhaps something was expected of us that did not feel right and so we chose to say no to the expectations placed upon us and to choose a different path that we might liberate our lives, our spirits, by listening to the call within us. Cornelius was one such first. In our tradition, he is the first person, along with his whole household, to be welcomed into the family of Christ from outside the Jewish faith. And it's a great story to ponder on when we think about what we have been living with in these times, both the resistance movements, the social unrest, and COVID itself. Because when you think about the dream that Peter had, the sheet being lowered down from heaven held on all four corners, on Friday we compared it to an upside down tent. And the tent has long been the symbol of the gathering place for people for spiritual practices as well as habitation. The ark had a tent long before it had a temple. And people imagined planting their tents on the holy mountain where they heard, where they saw Christ transfigured in the presence of Moses and Elijah. They wanted to stay on that mountain 
in their own little tents, in their own little world, but Christ sent them back down the mountain. And then God reaches into the life of Peter and he says, go where I send you to the one who is calling for you, reaching out to you. And he sends an angel to Cornelius, recognizing the value of Cornelius's life and says, send for Peter and see what he has to tell you. And the dream of a sheep that comes down with animals that should have been profane, but God has made clean and sacred is a message that the world has been overturned, that the tent in which we live and believe has been upended. And what we thought was outside the law and the boundary of our community is now welcomed and part of us. It contains more than we could ever imagine. And so when Peter goes into the household of Cornelius and he preaches about the word of God, the life of Christ, the first thing he says is, you know I shouldn't have been here based on the practices of my faith tradition, but God said to come and here I am. He was understanding that his vision applied to the people to whom he was speaking and that they had been welcomed into the body of God, the body of Christ, that the barriers for Cornelius to belong to this faith community had been swept away by God's love and recognition of the value of Cornelius and the women and men of his household and the children of his household, an entire household was welcomed into connection and belonging. And they symbolized that with the baptism. And then the spirit came down and fell upon them. Not just the water, but the spirit welcomed them into connection and community and broke open the tent and overturned it and made it bigger and broader and in a time of COVID, when we are not often in our own little tent, we have been alive and well, but we were challenged to leave our tent and find a new way to be community and church and brothers and sisters to each other. And it has largely meant leaving the safety of the tent that we understood and moving out into a space with a bigger tent in a canopy that has been overturned in a canvas that really invites us to recognize the entire world as our community. Whether we do it over Zoom or out on the streets or at the way station or in Honduras or in partnership with Zimbabwe or in partnership with other churches in the valley. Our lives have been broken open and changed as Peter's ideas about who belonged were broken open and as Cornelius's connection was broken open that their lives might be connected. And today when we take communion together as we will we are reminded that the life of Christ was the first to be broken and that in that breaking, we were all invited to become the body of Christ. But beyond the Jewish community that first heard that word, someone else had to be the next first and it was Cornelius. Cornelius was invited into connection and with that invitation, the doors were flung wide, the portals were opened, and the tent got bigger, and the body became one that recognized each of us and all those that we have not even yet met or dreamed of who seek connection. In these days and times, let us remember that it is not us who sets the agenda. It is not us who sets the law or the expectation about who belongs and who does not. It is God's decision to open the tent and welcome all people. What God has said is not profane 
has become sacred and holy, and that is the life of every brother and sister on this planet, every being on this planet. When someone goes first, they do so because of the accomplishments of others, because others have given of themselves and sacrificed themselves and made possible what the one who steps through the door is doing on behalf of all their people. When Cornelius stepped through that door, others made it possible. God made it possible. And when Ruby Bridges attended school and when women had the vote, and when we leave this church and find new ways to be church and the body of Christ for each other, we don't do it by ourselves. We do it in connection with each other and a love that is holy and a love that makes all things possible. God takes our brokenness and turns it into hope and transformation. And when things seem their messiest and most chaotic, that is where growth is coming and love will change everything. Cornelius was the first, but there will always be a next first who seeks belonging as our tent gets bigger and the body of Christ is thrown wide. And the love that we will celebrate today is broken and poured out for all of us. And we in turn pour out our lives in service and play and joy for the God who believes that each of us belongs, not just to God, but to each other. Thanks be to God. I ask you now, brothers and sisters, to consider your promises and your support to this church, which has indeed been a tent flung open and wide in these days and times, still connecting across the world and in this valley itself, a bright and a shining light. Even this morning, when a few of us gathered in person, two visitors from Connecticut were able to join us. And new people have come to the eight o'clock gathering at the pavilion. We ask that you will continue to make, make real your pledge and your promise to us in all possible ways. You can send in your donations, your contributions. You can drop them off. You can make them virtually by going to jxncc.org and donating online. However you do so, help us continue to be that bright and that shining light. These times are changing all of us, but they are not over. And we are still in the midst of, of messy transformation. So we ask you to be part of it. I wanna offer you now just a moment, if you are not yet prepared for communion, take just a moment now to go get yourself anything that counts as a holy beverage, a glass of juice, a glass of water, a cup of tea, whatever you might have at hand. And if you have anything nibbly, it can be a piece of fruit or a cookie or bread, or if you happen to have a holy wafer, that's great. We're hoping to get holy wafers for everybody eventually. Well, most of you. I, I think the California and Ohio and Florida people may not be in Massachusetts. Um, you're going to have to do your own. But for others, we hope that we can provide for you a communion. But today we're going to do it the way we've been doing it for several months. And we're going to be doing the Sursum Corda and Sanctus together. Do you mind playing just like a little music for one moment while people are returning? Thank you. Thank you.
Although about the time I send Alan running now, everybody looks like they're back. Alan's just gonna give us a moment of music. That was a lovely interlude. And now everyone, if you will join me please in the Sursum Corda and Sanctus and read together, God be with you. Lift up your hearts. You can unmute yourselves here. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is, it is right, right to, give thanks. to give thanks and praise. It is very meet Right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify, we your, laud glorious and magnify name, your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. And now I'm going to ask you to mute yourself <laughs> while we sing together, while except those that are in the con in the sanctuary. Holy, holy. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God, we call upon your spirit. As you poured out your love upon Cornelius and his household, giving witness to all who watched that your love is for all people, we ask that you will send your love into our lives and that you will bless the elements that we have gathered each in our own households and here in your house. Bless the food and the drink that we place before you and bless our lives, our lives that have been broken in so many ways, our lives that are yours to transform. Today, may we feel and know your transforming love and presence. Be with us now and in our going out. Amen. Brothers and sisters, imagine that Peter, who has received the message that nothing is profane, that God has made all holy and sacred. And so when he enters Cornelius' household for the first time in his life, he sits down to a meal with someone who is not from the Jewish community. And when they offer him their hospitality, he says yes, and he says thank you, and he sees and knows God's presence in the goodness that is offered to him by Cornelius. This too is a communion story. It is one of the earliest stories of our Christian tradition 
binding us together with food and drink at a common table in a tent that just got bigger. And so I invite you I invite you to take the bread or the food that you have been able to find, the body that has been offered up to you. I invite you to take and to eat and to do so in remembrance of the one whose body was broken that we too might be broken open by love. Take and eat. And brothers and sisters, as you raise to your lips the cup that you have prepared, know that the love of Christ has been poured out for you, that this is the story that Peter shared with Cornelius that welcomed him into the family of God. Take of the cup of blessing and do so in remembrance of the one whose love is poured out for us. Brothers and sisters, please unmute yourselves and join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. We are not alone. God made us. We are not alone. We have, we have, we have, we have Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble, trouble pain, pain, or persecution? persecution. No, in all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither death nor life, neither messenger of heaven nor ruler of earth, neither what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow, neither power from our high nor from the nor anything else has power to separate us. And brothers and sisters, now you are invited to mute yourselves as we enter the benediction. Uh, we here in the sanctuary will not be singing, so you guys are doing all the singing, but you will hear sing <laughs> underneath your own. So please enjoy the benediction. Mm -hmm. Are we unmuted? Mm -hmm. You should mute yourselves. Good.
Okay, everybody, here's how the last little bit of this is going to flow. Alan's going to give us about one minute of music. And then you guys can all unmute and chat. This is our virtual coffee hour. And then Alan will once again play us out as the post lead. So just listen for a moment. Thank you. 